Hi everyone. I wanted to review last week's assessment item, this differential equations FRQ. This is a, a free response question in FRQ from the 2012 AP exam. This is number five from the BC exam. You can Google this and get the question text, the rubric, sample, student responses, uh, and check all of that out. But there are a couple of things I wanted to go through. Um, so this is a pretty standard uh, differential equation you see on the uh, AP exam. The first question is about uh, whether the bird whose uh, weight is represented by this differential equation is gaining weight faster at when it's 40 grams or when it's 70 grams. Uh, most of you handled this well. Just a couple of uh, points here. Number one, you need to make explicit this connection between dB, dt, and uh, these numbers. So some of you just had sort of this computation and you said, well, 12 is greater than 6. Uh, therefore, it's, it's you know, gaining weight faster uh, at 40. But you need to write this equation uh, explicitly. You need to make this connection that this is the rate of change of the weight of the bird. The bird. So that's one thing. Um, give a complete you know, sentence answer and avoid uh, use of the word it. Um, say the bird. The bird is gaining weight faster. Don't say it is faster at uh, b equals 40. Um, it is a word that will get you into trouble on the AP exam because it, it could refer to anything like uh, it. Is it the weight of the bird? Is it the bird? Is it the rate of change of the weight of the bird? Um, you don't want to put the AP reader in a position to have to interpret that. And it will be very uh, problematic if you're dealing with a question that has a function and its derivative is, and its antiderivative. You know, if you say it is increasing, are you talking about the function? Are you talking about the derivative of the function? Are you talking about the antiderivative? So you have to be careful about this. You want to use really explicit, specific language. Um, part B, again, most people did, handled well. Just be careful. When you compute the second derivative, you have to use the chain rule uh, because um, you're computing the derivative of the first derivative, which is given by this. When you push this through, you have to use the chain rule on uh, B, and that gives you that the second derivative is actually negative one-fifth the first derivative, which you can then sub back in uh, with this equation. Uh, and again, just be specific. Uh, you know, say because the second derivative of this function is negative, the graph of this function should be concave down, but the graph of the function that is given is not concave down on that entire interval. Therefore, that can't be the graph of the function. Part C, again, people uh, generally did well. Um, just a couple of little things. Uh, number one, after you separate variables, almost all of the differential equations you deal with on the AP exam will be separable, meaning you can separate the, you know, the D, all the B stuff on one side here and all the T stuff on the other. Show the integral sign, show that you're integrating. Um, you know that there should be two C's here, a C1 and a C2, but it's standard practice just to combine them into a single C. That's totally fine. Watch out for the, the reverse chain rule here. When you integrate this, this is ln of 100 minus b. But since it's negative b, you should have a negative out in front there. Um, the one thing I want to talk about is this uh, initial condition. You use the initial condition to find c. A lot of you solved explicitly for b and then use the initial condition to find c. That's totally fine. Often it's easier just to do it immediately after integration. If t is 0 and b is 20, then you get this equation right away. You know that c is ln of negative 80. So this is 1 fifth minus ln of 80. Uh, now you exponentiate. And you have to be careful here. One other thing you want to do. So this is um, actually it probably would have been easier to move the minus sign over here, right? Um, oh, and there's a T there, yes. And so now e to this is 100 minus b. This is e to the negative 1 fifth t plus ln of 80. But notice that, of course, this is e to the negative 1 fifth t, e to the ln of 80, that's a rule of exponents, and e to the ln, ln of 80 is 80. So this is 80 e to the negative 1 fifth t. Uh, 100 minus b, well, we know that b is less than 100 because the weight of the bird is less than 100, so we can drop the absolute value bars, and then we can just solve that b is 100 minus 80 e to the negative 1 fifth t.